What's going on guys? Dare here with Fantasy Football Advice coming at you with another Fantasy Football video. Today, we are going over the late round must own league winners. These are the types of players that have massive upside and if they hit after drafting them in the late rounds, these will truly set your team apart from your opponents for the remainder of the season. Before we do get into the video though, stat of the day. Yesterday's stat of the day, which tight end with a minimum of five targets inside the 10 yard line boasted the best catch rate in the league? The correct answer, Hunter Henry. Today's stat of the day, which running back had the most games last year of six plus yards per carry so once again that's which running back had the most games last year averaging over six yards per carry leave your answer in the comment section down below we'll be happy to let you know who wins in tomorrow's video also guys if you want to submit a question that we answer in one of our uploads feel free to post your questions on our website thefantasyfootballadvice.com while you're there consider signing up and becoming a member of our community you will be eligible for exclusive giveaways courtesy of our friends at pristine auction use code ffa at sign up for pristine auction for a free five dollar credit but guys with that stuff out of the way let's just hop right into the video when thinking of a late round league winner at the running back position it can't be a player who's guaranteed volume if it was their draft stock would be higher but in the later rounds it's harder to find a player with as much upside as boston scott we've been very vocal about our enamor for miles sanders throughout this offseason well that goes double for boston scott especially when you consider he is the only capable running back with a similar skill set to sanders on the eagles roster he is in line for a major workload if anything were to happen to Sanders and in the limited action that we've seen Boston Scott play in he's played very very well for a smaller back standing at 5'6", 203 pounds he's played extremely well between the tackles averaging over four yards per carry on the ground but where he really shines is in the receiving game. He caught 26 of 24 targets for an astounding 94% catch rate while maintaining an 8.5 average of yards per reception. Very impressive when you do consider he did show a knack for reaching the end zone, boasting a rushing touchdown on a one on every 12 attempts. While that number is guaranteed to go down, his effectiveness in all areas of the field should not go unnoticed. One area that may typically be a detriment to these smaller receiving backs is the area of pass blocking. Well, Boston Scott, despite everything stacked against him, was the second best run blocking rusher in the entire league. He also ranked 21st when it comes to fantasy points per opportunity and even outpaced that by ranking top 10 in production premium. So overall, when compared to other running backs in a similar situation, this is the type of player to produce top 10 numbers when compared against the field. So the only real knock against Boston Scott is that he is undersized, but when you take into account everything else surrounding him, you have one of the better receiving backs boasting a 94 plus percent catch rate while maintaining an 8 plus average average yards per reception the number two ranked back when it comes to pass blocking efficiency who when compared to the field around him if in any given situation is given the same opportunity share as every running back in the league has proven to outscore 90 percent of the field on a fantasy points per game basis this is also a rusher who has proven to have a knack for reaching the end zone scoring on one out of every 12 rushing attempts so we really can't find an area of weakness when it comes to boston scott's game he is proving to to be one of the best handcuffs in the league for this very reason and for that when coming up with a list of potential league winners for the 2020 season we can't make that list without including boston scott the next player we have shouldn't come as too much of a surprise and that's deontay johnson of the pittsburgh steelers and despite all of the buzz surrounding Deontay Johnson this offseason, his ADP really hasn't skyrocketed, at least not as much as I thought it would at this point. Currently, he can be drafted as the 41st wide receiver off the board. Not a hefty investment, we're literally talking wide receiver 5 territory, so we're talking players that you can either drop early on in the season if you find any better options in the waiver wire, so the investment overall is very minimal to land him on your team. We're talking outside of the top 100 overall picks. We would be lying to you if we said Deontay Johnson Johnson was some exceptional athlete, but no, what he does do well are things that athletic measurements really can't put to light. He was a third round pick, so they don't have heavy draft capital invested in him. He's only 5'10", he's only 183 pounds. And even his breakout age, a factor that we always look for for young receivers as they ascend into the league as a potential indicator, that was only in the 43rd percentile. 
So nothing to us jumps off the board and screams this is a player who is destined for greatness. However, when you look into the true stats and what he was able to do on the field in 2019, you start to see a different picture. This is a player who despite ranking 80th in the percentage of snaps that he played, still ranked 34th in receptions, 43rd in receiving yards, 37th in touchdowns, clearly outpacing other receivers given a greater opportunity than himself. Deontay Johnson had terrible play at quarterback last season that's why he boasted the 48th best catch rate in the league nothing to write home about but when actually taking a look at the true catch rate which discredits targets that were deemed uncatchable well Deontay Johnson was a top 20 producer in that area of the field so long as you could get it within his catchable target radius Deontay Johnson had one of the better opportunities in consistency when it comes to coming down with those types of balls he also ranked first when it came to target separation so he's not even the type of player to put himself in situations where he will have to battle for the ball in tight coverage because he's easily able to separate himself from the defender and get himself open. All signs point to Big Ben returning this season healthy and as athletic as anyone has ever seen him in recent years. And we cannot forget that Big Ben is the type of quarterback to be able to support two fantasy relevant wide receivers. Think back as early as 2018 with Antonio Brown and Juju Smith-Schuster. Both of these players were wide receiver once that season. Juju Smith-Schuster playing the wide receiver two role was still able to post over 1400 receiving yards regardless of if he's even able to hit his high end of the range of outcomes for him you're still getting a player who's coming in at a value he's currently coming off the board as the wide receiver 41 after finishing last season as the wide receiver 43 playing in just 67 percent of snaps with a dumpster fire at the quarterback position Moving on to the next late round league winning player, we have Tony Pollard of the Dallas Cowboys. As much as we like to think we know which running back is the next man up in certain offenses, the truth is we don't really know in a lot of situations. While Alexander Madison is a strong handcuff to Dalvin Cook and Latavius Murray is a great handcuff to Alvin Kamara, the waters do start to get murky when you start to dive into these other running backs and try to figure out which running back is guaranteed to take the workload if an injury were to ever occur to the back ahead of him. Well, that's not an issue that you have to deal with when drafting the handcuff of the Dallas Cowboys backfield. Tony Pollard is undoubtedly the man behind Z. He has the combination of size and speed that you're looking for in a workhorse running back. And let's be honest, Dallas Cowboys, they want a workhorse. That's been their motto for several years now. And Tony Pollard gives that team the confidence to be able to roll out one running back if anything were to happen to Zeke. Despite only seeing him play in limited action, anytime we have seen him touch the ball, he has looked phenomenal. He ranked fourth in the entire league in his true yards per carry, which discredits the impact of big plays and puts a premium on consistency. He ranked eighth in yards per touch in the entire league, top 35 when it comes to the amount of breakaway runs he was able to produce last season, top 10 in his breakaway run rate, and even a top 30 player when it came to his juke rate. So everything possible that we would look for a running back to determine how successful he would be if given the workload, Tony Pollard checks all marks. And the best part is that the Dallas Cowboys have wanted to get Tony Pollard more involved. Obviously, they're limited in the overall amount of volume they can give to him, with Zeke being the back out front of him. But if anything were to happen to Ezekiel Elliott, you have a running back who is guaranteed to be top 10 with top 5 rushing upside. Currently, you can nab Tony Pollard for a 12th round pick, which is pretty astounding considering the impact he could have on your team overall. If we're talking about late round players with league winning type of upside, it's harder to find a player that doesn't envision that more than that of Tony Pollard. The final late round league winning player we have is going to sound a little bit gross and it's Deshaun Jackson of the Philadelphia Eagles. And before you crucify me, first just hear me out. The first major factor is that the Philadelphia Eagles offense has put an emphasis on the importance of this position and this role in the offense for the 2020 season. Not only did they take the necessary steps to ensure that Deshaun Jackson would return healthy by holding him out for a necessary time last season and letting his rehabilitation not be rushed by trying to get him back on the field sooner, but they also added Marquise Goodwin to fill that role if anything were to happen to Deshaun Jackson. Contrary to popular belief explosive plays in the passing game was an area that the Philadelphia Eagles struggled with greatly in in 2019. They ranked 22nd in explosive plays through the passing game in 2019, an area we can guarantee improves with the addition of Deshaun Jackson and that safety valve of Marquise Goodwin if anything were to happen to him. 
I know I say the addition of Deshaun Jackson as if he wasn't on the team last season and realistically he really didn't make an impact. He played in just two regular season games, only one of them actually healthy. But in that healthy game, week one of 2019, he posted incredible numbers, catching eight of nine possible targets for 154 receiving yards to go along with two receiving touchdowns. While Deshaun Jackson is still likely to be a boomer bust player, even if he does play a full healthy season, playing him and determining which matchups are better suited for his overall production are going to be easier to guess than you would think. The formula is going to be simple. Is this a team with a poor passing defense that is beatable with deep plays? Then ask yourself question two. Is this the type of game where we could see the Eagles going up early and not having to rely on a heavy passing attack? Because ultimately, if you do find the Philadelphia Eagles in a position where they're going to have to throw the ball late into the second half of each game, and they're facing a beatable pass defense, one that's susceptible to deep plays, it's almost a guarantee Deshaun Jackson, if healthy, is going to play pop off that game. The way I see it though, Deshaun Jackson is still not a shoe in to even play more than a handful of games this year. By drafting him, you have to know that heading into it. If Deshaun Jackson heading into this season was a healthy type of player, his ADP would be miles ahead of where it is currently standing as the 152nd overall pick. Currently, he's coming off the board as wide receiver 60, and he's one of the only players being drafted in this range who has undeniable wide receiver one upside. We saw it in week one of last season where he posted over 31 fantasy points in that single contest. And while that is going to be on the higher end of the types of performances that we can expect, it still just goes to show you the type of upside that he has and can produce for your team while healthy. But guys, that's going to do it for this video. Let us know in the comment section down below which players you have listed as potential league winners that you can find in the late rounds if you did enjoy this video how about hitting that like button if you're new to the channel please hit that subscribe button we thank you all for watching we'll catch you on the next one